Well, hello. Welcome to A Fine Time for Healing. I'm your show host, Randy Fine. And as I told you uh, just about three days ago, that I have changed the format of my podcast after 12 years from doing audio to doing video. So all of this will be on YouTube, as well as my blog talk radio channel, which will be audio only. But now you get to see my wonderful guests, which is amazing. Um, and it's a lot more enjoyable, I think, to watch it. So <laughs> <laughs> um, my guest today is Susan Miller, and she is an internationally known author, columnist, entrepreneur, publisher, and pioneer of the internet. She is the respected founder of astrologyzone.com. Her site is considered an authority in the field of Western astrology and is read avidly by 11 and a half million unique readers a year. That's a lot. She's highly respected. She's a highly respected astrological thinker and is recognized worldwide for her astrological writings outside the box into areas of business, technology, lifestyle, culture, and the economy. Um, Susan's bio is pretty long and I'm going to ask her to give you some more information so we can get her on and I don't have to talk uh, without her. So good morning, Susan. Good Lord. morning. That sounds exhausting. Do I do all these things? Wow. <laughs> yeah, and there's a paragraph a little bit longer that goes along with that that talks about um, your app store and your 12 I have two different books apps. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've written 15 books. But, um, you know, in astrology or anything else, it's what you've done recently that really counts. You're only as good as your last column. And I'm always very aware that's why I strive to be comprehensive, accurate, and warm. And, and, and to not only report the news, but if, if a sign has some difficulty, it's not enough to just say it's coming. I have to show them how to deal with it and get out of the briar patch, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, um, yes, I have two apps. One is a daily horoscope, which is on Apple and Google, and it's called Ast Astrology Zone Horoscopes by Susan Miller. The other one is called Moonlight. And I was a little afraid to come out with it because it's a new concept for laymen, but professional astrologers have used what I talk about on that app uh, for years, uh, centuries. You should never do anything when the moon is void of course. Now that sounds like a disease, but <laughs> it means she's not communicating closely with another planet, one or more planets. And when does that happen? Is well, it happens at different times of the day and night oh. all the time. Sometimes it'll be a whole day. Sometimes it'll only be an hour. And it used to be really hard to figure out when it's happening because you'd have to look at tables on the internet and they were all GMT. Uh, it was exhausting. It was a lot of calculations. So you only did it if somebody was getting married or signing a contract, something like that. Okay. But now with the magic of apps, you can put GPS in it so I can report when it goes out and when it goes back to normal um, by where you're sitting. And if you happen to go to Paris for the weekend, it will follow you <laughs> wherever you go. And I made it easy. And, I, you know, I have a favorite artist. His name is Isaac Zanu. And I said, Isaac, I need a moon. So he gives me something that looks like NASA. I'm like, no, no, I should have been <laughs> much more clear. I want her to have little rosebud mouth, little eyelashes and rosy cheeks. Aww. She has to be sweet. And he said, oh, Suzanne, I understand. You know, and, and he gave me exactly what I want. And, and every day there's slightly different colors and so forth. But people are saying it's so easy. I can't believe that. My readers are loving it. I thought it would take a little while for them to get used to it. They dove right in. And and this one, unlike my other app, which is a subscription of a dollar a week for 99 a month, this one is a flat $8. It takes you to the year 2050. You never have to buy another again. And um, 
it's very helpful. Like for example, today, I wanted to make sure we had the best interview we could. So I made sure the moon was not void at the time we booked. So, um, you know, and I've even actually indoctrinated my, my staff here and they, uh, they check before if they say, oh, the New Yorker is going to interview you. I'm like, oh, let's make sure it's not void. And, but they look it up and, you know, it's so simple. So it's, uh, it's called Moonlight Phases by Susan Miller. If you just put in Susan Miller in the Apple App Store or Google Play, both apps come up. Okay. Like and I, I, you know, it's fun to create things, you know? And I, I heard that, uh, I don't know if it's correct, but that Venus is in, um, in retrograde right now. No, 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 Mercury and Mars is. Mercury. Uh, but I I'm glad you brought that up because I'm a little sad to see that she will, the little Venus will be retrograde from July 28th to September 3rd. And this is a time a lot of, a lot of couples get married. And um, Venus is love, mm -hmm. Venus is happiness. And if Venus is retrograde, it means she's sleeping and shutting down a lot of her powers. Mm -hmm. So it is not ideal to get married during Venus retrograde. And uh, well, Mars has been retrograde forever <laughs> since the day before Halloween, October 30th, but it's going direct January 12th. And, and both Venus and Mars don't retrograde that often. Uh, Venus every 18 months and um, Mars about every two years. But Mercury is retrograde right now, too. And that happens for three and a half weeks, every, about three times a year. So um, we, and, we and have then, to watch and, and them. From what I understand about Mercury and re retrograde is that um, it affects communication. It does. And so you don't want to sign a contract. And that includes marriage. Now, let's say you have pick the worst day, like two of my closest friends for their weddings. <laughs> like, mama mia, I help millions of people and you do pick this by yourself and you didn't ask me. So they were freaking out, but I said, no, no, there's a workaround. What you do is you get married in city hall quietly. You don't tell your parents. You find two friends who are going to be, you know, zipper chat about this. Right. You're right. going to go and you're going to get married, but you're never going to celebrate that day. But in the eyes of astrology and the eyes of the state that you live in, you're married. Okay. But then you go ahead and you have your gorgeous wedding afterward, you know, whenever that is. But that makes it easier for an astrologer. Just yesterday, my daughter called and said, oh, one of my best friends wants to get married in September. I said, oh, Chrissy, that's only four days if she wants a Saturday. She said she might consider a Sunday. They weren't really perfect days for her sign. Her sign is a Leo. And I said, can she consider Libra, which is the sign of marriage, October? Can we do October 7th? You know, can we push it just a little? So Chrissy was just going to find that out. But when you have any day that the city hall is open, you have millions of days that you can choose from. And... And they're better days. They're, I mean, I can pick the perfect day if I don't have to choose a Saturday. So, um, so there what, are. So benefits. how does it affect? So does it affect the marriage? The whole term of the marriage. You know, uh, one of the days this couple had picked, Saturn was conjunct the sun, so the woman would be burdened. Uh, or unhappy or, or felt hemmed in. The other one had Pluto opposition, the moon. Um, the partner could be a little dominant and pushy, you know, and a little hard to come to an agreement if you, you know, had a conflict, which everybody has sooner or later. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to move the planets almost like on a chessboard. Now you behave, you little planets, you know. <laughs> so. You know, it's a lot more complicated than you would think because you also have to work with both uh, the, you know, the, the bride and the groom, you know, both, both people, you can't have it good for one and not the other. That's not fair. My own daughter uh, got pregnant before 
she got married and, and, and she was living with Leo. It's wonderful, a wonderful, wonderful couple. And so they had the baby. She wanted to lose the weight. And I'm looking for the best day. And the year that we started to look was bad between two big planets. So I kept putting it off. And finally, Chrissy said, all of Leo's friends are saying, hey, when are you and Chrissy getting married? And I thought, oh my God, I better get on the stick. I really picked a beautiful day. If you are listening and about to get married and trying to pick a day, start near your birthday because that's the sun conjunct the sun. Mm -hmm. The sun is coming back to where it was when you were born and then fan out from there a little bit before, a little bit after. Believe it or not, I would say 65% of brides get married within six weeks of their birthday, either before or after. And look at your mom, uh, look at your aunts and uncles and best friends and see if that holds true. There's another uh, interesting fact. And actually my daughter read this somewhere. And when I first heard it, I said, no. She said, you usually marry the sign of your mother or your father. And I said, well, Chrissy, that's not true, I don't think. She said, mommy, you married daddy, he's Scorpio. Your father, grandpa, is Scorpio. Great grandmother on, on grandma's side is Scorpio. What do you mean you didn't <laughs> you know, follow that? I'm like, it's totally unconscious. Wow. And and happy because you're you're familiar with it. Now, it could be the rising sign, too. And you and I were talking about that before we went on the air. The rising sign is just as important as your birthday sign. But you can only find out your rising sign if you know your exact time of birth. And then you set up a chart, which a lot of people can even do online for free. I'm working on having one online for free for my readers, but I'm writing the interpretations right now. Mm. Um, and they're detailed as usual. So I give myself you know, so much work, but I want it right. And so, but anyway, you can find out your rising sign pretty easily these days. And, and the time should be on your birth certificate. And if you say, no, it's not. Well, I ask, is that a, a computer certificate? Because if it is, if it's $5 and you got it at the driver's vehicle, uh, motor vehicle place, then it, it won't have the time of birth because it's $5 and it just pops out of mm. the, the computer. You need the original one. Mm -hmm. The one that tells you how long you were and how much you weighed and what your father's middle name is. And mm -hmm. All that interesting information is on the original and it exists. It's not at the hospital. People say to me, oh, I called the hospital. They don't have it. Of course they don't. This is a municipal function. It's at the Hall of Records or the Bureau of Vital Statistics, usually in your state capital. When it comes to New York, where I live, all five boroughs are in Manhattan. The rest of New York State is in Albany. So you can find out very easily. You could probably do a Google search. And um, it should cost between $20 and $30, some as low as $15. But it should not be $5 because that's the computer. So I have some value. questions for you, Susan. OK, so, sure. so, we, so we can take this um, in other directions as well. Sure. Um, I know, well, first I wanted to ask you, how accurate are these horoscopes that people are reading? Because like you say, there's so many factors in our birth, um, our birth chart, our natal chart, that how can our sun sign really define what's going on or predict? That's such a good question. And um, when I, I, first of all, no astrologer believes in astrology before they study astrology. All of us were talking about that. We thought, no, how could that be? But in my um, forecast on astrology zone, I'm so detailed. I say, if you're born on September 4th, plus or minus five days, you will feel this full moon. Oh, wow. If you're born October 31st, you will feel this eclipse or so forth. And... Um, the thing to remember, and most people don't know this, you have two charts. You have your sun sign chart, and you have the chart that you uh, 
put together from your exact birth time. Why is the sun sign chart so important? The sun is at the heart of our solar system. It's in the middle. All the planets dutifully march around the sun. Nobody marches around Venus, Mercury, Mars, Uranus, no. The sun holds a very special place. It's in the center. And that's why it's important to check both the horoscope for your sun sign and for your rising sign. Okay. If you check both, you'll have 80% of what you need to know. Of course, it's always better to have a personal astrologer help you if you have a big decision. But I'll tell you, I'm amazed at what, it's almost like ringing an orange, <laughs> how much juice I can get out of my calculations. But it takes me seven hours to write each one. Oh, wow. And I check my math very carefully. And you have to like math if you're in astrology, you must. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that comes, it's geometry actually. When two planets move within five or I would say eight degrees of each other, they begin communicating. And I look at that chart and I say, talk to me. What are you trying to tell me? I need to break the code. My, re my readers who are Libra, who are Gemini or any sign want to know. So talk to me. And sometimes I have to stare at it a bit and check all the other little planets surrounding it. You see, I, I write a calendar once a year and it helps me so much to be better because you must look at the whole sky when you're making a prediction. You can't check what's going on here if you didn't check what's going on here. I'll give you an example. Jupiter conjunct Mercury is probably the best you could get if you're making an important agreement. It happens once a year. But I remember writing the calendar one year and Neptune was opposition Mercury. Neptune clouds everything, makes things hard to understand or even has information thing, which is even worse. That's why you hire a good lawyer because they know, wait a minute, there's something not in here we need to add. You know, so you don't want to sign on a day like that. So I have to juggle things. And sometimes I'll say, this would have been a great day if it weren't for, for Neptune spoiling the pudding but I have a better day for you. And I suggest something else. Okay. So, but my mother made me study astrology for 12 years before I ever told anyone I knew astrology. Wow. And I, I majored in business. I, I mean, this was, this was supposed to be my secret with my mom, but she said, don't tell people they don't understand, but astrology can help you so much to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I, was an agent for commercial photographers. And it sort of got around that if you're having a hard time, if you had to find a new apartment because your landlord sold the building or you broke up with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, call Susan, call 911, she'll come right down. And I always would. Mm -hmm. okay. And for 20 years, I never charged for a chart because I had a day job right. and I, I wanted to help people. So and, I have um, a question going back to the... Um, the date of the marriage, okay. And I ask this question for a lot of my viewers because I'm a narcissistic abuse expert and coach. Oh. And many of my viewers are going through <clears throat> the repercussions of narcissistic abuse, which means to me that they could have married this monster <laughs> pretty much any day at any time. And to me, the outcome could not possibly change. So how does this apply to that? You know, it's interesting. I had an assistant who would fit your description. And this goes back to the person, not the day you're picking for the marriage. You're, I am an optimistic person. I believe everyone, which my agents laugh at me. I have three agents for different areas of my, of my business. And they say, Susan, you just trust everyone. And I say, I do, unless they show me a reason not to. I'm open. And they said, but that's the problem. You're not suspicious. I said, I'm just not that girl. Mm -hmm. So I have to surround myself with people who can protect me, who can notice things that 
I should, I should have probably picked up, but I'm totally optimistic. And Pisces has this problem. Cancer has this problem. Uh, they tend to be wanting to help people and then they, um, they get into little jams because people take advantage. Yeah. So um, that goes beyond the wedding because then you could see if you have a pattern, I suppose, oh my goodness, you're the expert on that. Would, would a person who wants to marry a narcissist have a pattern of past relationships that were difficult? In many cases, they do. There are mm -hmm. some situations where the narcissist will choose someone who has nothing in their past, but they have an aspect of their personal success that the narcissist wants to ride the coattails of. So sometimes they will pick someone who's wealthy, who is has a, a very um, respected kind of job, educated something like that so that's one aspect the other aspect wow. is people who grow up um, in homes where they don't really develop the tools for existing in this world in <laughs> a healthy way and um, that includes not knowing how to set boundaries not understanding that um, this world is not perfect and one of the things that I have to tell people, which I hate to tell it because most people that they come to me, including myself, because I'm, I've survived this as well. Um, most people are, we're givers and we're forgivers and we are look past, you know, anything and we're potential <laughs> people, potential people. And, um, but because I'm so immersed in this world, I know it's a highly predatory world. Maybe it wasn't 20 years ago, but now it is. You and know, yeah, I used to think that maybe these difficult, actually mean, or I don't know what you could call them, uh, you know, people operating cruel, under the radar. Cruel monsters? Cruel. We're <laughs> only 5% uh, of the population. And my agents laugh at me. This is closer to 50% Susan. There's half the people working hard, trying to get ahead, and the other half trying to ride the coattails. And it it's disillusioning. I, uh, I don't know, I, I've just had a very bad experience. And, um, you know, with someone like that, who was sweet and darling and ingratiated herself into my, my life as, you know, someone as a part of my staff mm -hmm. got to know my family. And then suddenly the mask came down and um, the demands started. And uh, it, it was terrifying, actually. It I had to go to And I'm sorry. And, and you know, and I was discussing that. this with two girlfriends at dinner. And I said, I don't know how you'd be so dumb about this. And it, and the one girl said, I'm going through the same thing. And the other girl said, there's someone in my company. She's the head of the company. She provides beautiful meats uh, to the top restaurants in New York. And she also sells in supermarkets. And she said, there's someone I love. It's usually someone you just adore. They're friendly. They're warm. And I found out she's talking to my competitors and giving secrets. You know, this is so, uh, there's so many details to their behavior. And of course, I understand why they do it, what they do. I can predict exactly what someone's going to go through and how they're, it, it, it's, it's cookie cutter. It's textbook. Oh, uh, really? Is it like they, there's like a, 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 a it seems planned. It's, the way, uh, it's meticulously calculated. It is. And but they wear, you know, and I don't want to make this show about this. I just wanted to kind of bring it up. But th they wear different faces for different things because narcissists don't mm -hmm. have a personality. They mm -hmm. create personalities based on what they need to get from people, which is why you see different faces of them. Wow. So, yeah, it's do been you like, have a book on this. Did yes, you I do. 
It's called Close Encounters of the Worst Kind. Oh my gosh, I am definitely going to get it. Is it on Amazon? <laughs> yes, get the second edition. It's rich, okay. okay? No, I just people like out. me, little happy people like me need to... <laughs> No, yeah, I, I'd have to slap you upside the head a little bit because um, it, it being vulnerable in this world is dangerous. But yeah. I, I also don't want people to lose that sweetness, that giving nature. It's just that we have to be careful who we give that to. I never had a problem until this time. And my website's 27 years on the net. So I've always surrounded myself. I guess I've been very lucky with warm, giving, hardworking people. And we all are rowing in the same direction, so to speak. You know, right. we're all helping each other. And it's fun, fun working together. I always wanted that. And it was always virtual, too. But um, this girl worked with me in my apartment because I needed her here during a lot of the time. Not not every day, but a lot of the time. And um, actually when she finally showed her true face, I, I often see little Polaroids in my head to sum up a situation. And I was horrified to see her pretty face and that it was coming down like a screen and I was looking at the devil and it, I, I was like speechless. I was, and I could hear what she was saying. And it was like a total reversal in personality. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where this was coming from. I hadn't done anything. Yeah, no, you know, of course, that's it. the thing. You're good. Um, you know, it, the thing is that, you know, I grew, I was born in the late fifties. <clears throat> I grew up in the sixties and early seventies. The world was a lot simpler and mm. it's a very complicated world. We are connected everywhere in this world right now. And the disinformation. And, yeah, there's a lot of disinformation. There's 24 hour news. It's a, it's a whole lot, whole different ball game. But, you know, the benefit of the Dow is not a safe thing to do at this point yeah. in time. What I see what you're to, saying. What we have you to do is allow people to earn our trust and give it time to build because uh you know I, your friend said 50 percent. i mean 50 per percent of the world may be predatory and i would agree with that um i think 25 percent of the world has narcissistic personality disorder wow. and the associated connections to it so um it's mm -hmm. dangerous especially for people who are out there dating very scary but, uh, uh, dating. Like, Dating is a whole other complication. It is. So let's switch this up because I want to talk about the year 2023 and beyond. Um, and I you know that I like this year. I do. Yeah. I like this one. Do you really? I've heard different things. So there's a new Oh why? 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 Who has said anything bad about this sweet little year? What no, tell me, have you heard anything specific? Well, some people said this is going to continue to be like the difficulty that we're feeling, the uh, collective consciousness, um, that we're not going to necessarily get that relief that we want in this year. It's not changing enough. It's not, um, you know, it, it's not necessarily going to relieve that. But you say a new this is a new 200 year cycle that will rapidly shift life as we know it and i know oh, that well life, well i know yes. that life is shifting um well, are you're we going to see that are we going to see that you're talking about the grand conjunction and i wrote a small book 10,000 words actually 9,300 just about this it's going on kindle and bookbaby.com within days we're waiting for them to post it um what happened was what what everyone needs to realize is that astrology isn't just one aspect think of russian dolls fitting into each other and you have cycles over cycles over cycles over cycles and this is the big one and everybody was waiting for this in the astrological community it happened on December 21st, 2020, on that day, 
Jupiter and Saturn met in the sky. And actually, on the East Coast, there was a lot of fog. But I was getting pictures from the West Coast from people's iPhones. And you could see the rings of Saturn. You could see it by the naked eye. They were close to Earth this time, Jupiter and Saturn. Now, typically, Jupiter and Saturn always meet once every 20 years. But it's a big deal when they meet. It depends on the sign they meet in and the, the, uh, the element, fire, air, earth, or water. That matters a lot, too. And the, the two planets have dinner and they decide what they're going to do to color society mm -hmm. and what they're going to bring to us. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to illustrate this, we have to look back 200 years. Every time Jupiter and Saturn met in the past 200 years, it was Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. They never went out of order. They never stepped on each other's toes. They never deleted one. Can you imagine for 200 years, they only met in the constellation of Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Now those are earth signs and earth signs are touchy feely. They, um, they like to create things and they like to see them. Uh, it's, and I'll, I'll show the contrast in a minute. What did we accomplish in the past 200 years? Well, I look out my window here in Manhattan and I see buildings, I see roads. We built roads, bridges, tunnels, skyscrapers, cathedrals. We also had the Industrial Revolution and the um, assembly line. And it's hard to imagine 200 years isn't that long because our United States is 246 years old, um, almost 247. We're getting close to where um, the chart was in, in the uh, on the Declaration of Independence when we actually split. But uh, okay. we, it, it's hard to imagine that if you wanted oatmeal, you could not go to a supermarket. You'd have to go to a general store. And the proprietor would say, oh, I hope that barrel came in off the ship. Oh, yes, here it is. And he would, we, it would scoop some oatmeal into a paper bag. And let's say you needed a dress. Well, here's some fabric, but you had to go home and make it or go to a tailor. Men, I'm sure, had to go to a tailor. And it was very different. And, and of course, there was that part of life where my house is bigger than your house or my car is mm. better than your car. And all this is going away because... We're going to have a new attitude, a new era, a new approach. And it's because Jupiter and Saturn on December 21st, 2020 met in Aquarius. That's an air sign. And we know by the tables that NASA publishes and we read them, that's what astrologers use to make their predictions, that they will never meet in Earth again in our lifetime. Never, really? never again. They will meet in Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, and it will keep going. Now, what's the difference between air and earth? Air loves to travel, and we all are going to travel again. I know we've been cooped in the house with the pandemic, but we will get to travel. It's light and mobile. The, the idea of going to the office, that's over. We found out that working home is great. And more importantly, our employers found out that it's great. I've always worked at home. I love it. Yeah. And, you know, you save all that time in commuting and also the, the gas that you needed in your car. It got expensive. So that was and we started eating differently because we weren't doing takeout. We were home. We could whip up some soup or make something. You know, I got truly into cooking. I don't know about you, but I love to cook. And I really got into cooking during the pandemic. And we, um, the, it was a, it's going to be a different approach. Um, the robots are coming. Yes, they are. There are even little butlers that they're trying out, like this little machine comes to you and you say, could you get me a Diet Coke out of the refrigerator? And the little robot knows how to do that. I have no idea how, but 
they're working on it. And uh, so you'll have it in your house, but also big companies and manufacturers are working on this. And the, uh, the strides in medicine are going to be astounding. You know, there are so many diseases that are inherited, like sickle cell anemia or macular degeneration or many. And people suffer because they inherited it. And there'll be ways to, to get into the cells and, and they'll be able to identify. They still can't identify them. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they would be already doing it, but they're working on it now. And they have the machinery now. They have the tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's going to be a, a wonderful work. We'll be able to, to uh, air, airplanes are going to move faster, which is, I kind of like slow, <laughs> six hours to LA, but <laughs> I think Not I'm maybe. the only one. <laughs> I but, um, you know, we'll be able to go to Europe in three hours and there's just going to be a total switch. And um, here's the very important part. In an earth economy or society, the king or the president tells the people what to do. But now we're next to Capricorn comes Aquarius. And I don't know if you know that every sign on the horoscope wheel is opposite in temperament from the sign that just came before it. Okay. So Aquarius, it's the people telling the government what they want, what they expect, what they'd like to change. It's more grassroots. Oh, wow. So that's, um, and, and we got a little preview of this when Saturn went into Aquarius and, um, you know, with George Floyd and how people, came out on the streets and the day he was buried was an eclipse in Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. When you have an eclipse, that's very, very important because it's indelible. It makes change. The uh, January 6th uh, situation in Washington, that was triggered by a total eclipse on uh, July 4th, the year before, that half a year before. Usually you watch the day. If nothing happens on the day, you watch to see Saturn or Mars. Are they going to go over the same degree or opposition to the same degree? Both planets were too far away. So the third qualifier was the sun opposition the sun. Well, the sun opposition the sun on July 4th was January 4th. And you always have to give a plus or minus four or five days. It was right in there. Um, now, an eclipse happens every 19 years in the exact same degree, same sign. And I was a little worried about this eclipse because the last one 19 years ago brought 9-11. So uh, oh. that's a very sensitive sore spot in the United States chart. And uh, But as intelligent people, we we make changes and so that things won't happen again. You know, we, we, we get together and we talk and we have a public forum and we come to conclusions. And I think we're still in the process of that right now. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I think all things go toward good. They do. I mean, just look at Hitler. I mean, mm. no one thought they'd ever get him out of power and it did, that he did leave. <laughs> Wow. You know, yeah. he died. <laughs> but, Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a scary time for a lot of people. Um, what is causing the divide between people? Uh, be, well, it, Pluto. Cool. Pluto's in the same place as... Uh, Pluto, first, let me tell you, Pluto takes 248 years to go around the sun. Mm. So we're pretty much back. We're 246 and a half years old. We're back to that rebellious spirit, you know, and sometimes it's necessary to to have people come out in the open. I didn't think that there were white supremacists anymore. I thought we had left that in the past mm -hmm. or, or different radical views. I thought, oh, that doesn't happen anymore. People are educated, they read the paper, they listen to the news and, you know, most people aren't radical that I know. <laughs> so I thought that was in the past, but 
conditions, um, I think from Donald Trump who helped it, uh, brought people out in the open, things that were festering underground. And we can't solve something until we see it. So we're in the pro process now of seeing it and trying to bring it all together. I think we will. It's just going to take a few years. Um, I have a friend who's an astrologer, he's in his 80s. He felt we needed five good years, you know, to, to try to start ending the polarization. But, um, you know, as long as we keep talking and listening to each other, it's a good thing, you know. So Neptune in Pisces has been a problem. Neptune's very strong in Pisces, and it had a one side was wonderful. It gave great um, impetus to the arts and to beauty and grace. It is Neptune is the uh, the planet of of unconditional love and the arts, and so now it was in its home sign, so it was really exerting itself. But the flip side of Neptune and Pisces is the misinformation. Only when it started cuddling up with another planet. And uh, that's when it would, you know, start to show that other side. Mm -hmm. But Neptune will leave Pisces in, in 2025. So, you know, it's coming to the end of its long tour. I think, gosh, it must be about a, a 16 year, 15 year um, a tour in one sign. So um, it'll get better. It will. What I like about the coming year is, first of all, uh, Jupiter is going to be first in Aries, and that helps all the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag, and then also the air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So that's great. And then it moves into Taurus. So Taurus has its glorious year, along with Virgo and um and Capricorn. And now Jupiter is an equal opportunity employer. He was in Aries last year. So he's finishing up his last four months. So by four and a half, uh, by May 16th, the switch happens over to um, Jupiter in Taurus. And it's going to stay a full year. All the earth signs are gonna be celebrating all the way until May 25th, 2024 a whole year. Jupiter is the cornucopia. He's Santa Claus. He wants to make you happy. And he only comes by every 12 years. So you, you get this wonderful year every 12 years. Then Saturn is leaving Aquarius. Saturn and Aquarius gave us a hard time dealing with the pandemic because Aquarius is respiratory. It's air. It's going into Pisces. So we will the areas where we had challenges will start to dissolve. We'll get a new set of challenges. It's okay. When I had Jupiter, I, Saturn in Pisces, I started astrology zone. And people say, oh, that's a really hard place to start anything. You'll give up. No, you know, it was hard in the beginning. The internet was the wild west in 1995. But I loved it. No, if you love something, you stay with it. So we'll have new things and you'll see resolution on the things that you were grappling with and trying so hard to fix. Suddenly you're starting to see the outcome of your hard work. Okay. Now Pluto is going to change signs too. He's going into Aquarius, leaving Capricorn. I think we're going to have to worry about pathogens a lot in the next 20 years. He's staying in 20 years. He goes in there just for a little preview and then goes out uh, from the end of March to the middle of June. He's in Aquarius, then he leaves and he comes back in January and stays in for We have, we have her frozen for a second. Hopefully she'll come back. <laughs> this is so interesting. Susan, if you can hear me, you are frozen and we can't see you. I hope you all are learning a lot about this. I know I am. It, it's a fascinating science. Uh, Susan, we, we need you back. <laughs> She's so interesting.
So um, I'll just read you a little more about her. Susan's monthly forecasts are published on her website and on her app daily. What? Okay, I guess she'll come back. Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone and more by Susan Miller on Apple App Store and Google Play. And um, they're celebrated worldwide. Readers love Susan's warmth. Well, we can see that and compassion, as well as her accuracy and comprehensive reporting of current planetary trends. Fascinating stuff. Susan is the author of 12 astrology books, the ever popular The Year Ahead Astrology Calendars, and writes monthly columns for six international fashion magazines. Susan recently published the year 2022 in ebook which outlines major trends and breakthroughs for 2002 and beyond. Okay, I think we're coming back. Okay. Oh, you're back. Hi. Back. Okay, we lost you. Okay. I don't know what happened there because I could see myself moving. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. No, we lost you on the um, on the on the recording, but I was reading more about you, so it's okay. Um, I kept it going. So, okay, so we we there's things that we have to look forward to and yes okay definitely and also a very important part this year mars was stuck in gemini well that was okay if you're gemini because you were the leader of the parade but it didn't give us much variety because mars went into gemini in august august 20th and it's going to stay until march 25th so that's seven months in one sign from Mars. That's very unusual. Usually he only stays in seven weeks, not seven months. After we get past March 25th, Mars is moving fast. That means productivity is high. Resolution is high. We, we have lots of variety, different things to think about, different goals to accomplish. And it's, it's nice. And in terms of Jupiter, Aries is having their golden year. I mean, it's just magnificent. And it could be on any front. It could be you had a baby this year or you bought your first house or you started a business or you wrote a book. Something, some kind of dream is being captured by the Aries. Really? So yes. having a baby this year is um, is part of that? Part of it. Well, my daughter is Aries, and I've never seen her this happy. Her little baby is now nine months old, and he's delicious. Do you, have to, be, do you have to have that as your sign for this to happen? No. Well, I mean, Aries and Taurus are the two celestial favorites okay. for 2023. Okay. But we all have Aries somewhere in our chart, and we all have Taurus somewhere in our chart. And those little slices of the pizza pie are going to glow and glitter yeah. you know, my daughter so is my daughter is taurus and um she's oh. expecting this year her first baby oh perfect she'll have such a sweet little baby really oh, no. i'll let her know when does she do when does she do uh april 18th my daughter's birthday the one who had the baby is april 19th wow. and there's an eclipse on that day uh, on the 19th and uh, that usually means change in your life. And nothing changes your life as much as this little baby. The, tell her the first four months are hard because their <laughs> no. stomachs are as big as a walnut and they eat all the time. They need their milk. But after four months, uh, five months is delicious. It gets yeah. so yeah. much easier. Yeah. But just tell her. she'll. It's coming to a good place. And the littleness is so cute. But Taurus, you're going to have what Aries has now. Uh, May 16th is when it begins. But you have to have your wish list and you have to partner with the universe. You can't just sit in your house and hope that, you know, the jolly green giant is going to knock on your door with a basket full of wishes for you. You have to make it known what you want, right. you know, and then the universe will help you get that you know take steps toward what you want now you only get these every 12 years so it's really important now gemini you had a great career year recently in 22 now the pressure comes off because you were working really hard you were taking advantage of all the opportunity now you you your circle of friends will expand enormously in the second half of the year after may 16th it's very good for going into seclusion to do research or writing. 
you know, this is a son that writes books. So um, they may have something in mind that they have to do a lot of background work on. They're getting prepared for the best year of their life in 24. Gemini's? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful year. Um, remember, this is a rare year. You only get eight of them in a lifetime if you live to 96. Of course, I don't know where in the cycle that you're coming in, but I, I did a, a lot of calculations and you only get eight if you live to 96. I, tell, I call me what, the, tell me what we're looking at for Virgo, since that's my sign. Well, Virgo, Virgo right now is, is just rocketing off the shelf with career accolades. They are doing so well. They have until the end of March. Mars is helping elevate their name and what they're doing. It's a great time to hire a publicist and get the word out because Virgo is a shy sign. They tend to be modest. They say, well, I'm just doing my job. But yeah, they're doing it in space. They're doing it beautifully. The, the thing about uh, Virgo, which I'm so happy to report, the first half of the year, it's money. Money is coming in in royalties, uh, commissions, uh, licensing fees. Uh, inheritance, bonuses, prizes. Maybe you'll go on Jeopardy. <laughs> Be one of the winners. You, know? you, you hear a lot of facts from all, all your guests. So. Right. Oh, I do. I hear a lot. We might want to cash in on that. And then in the second half of the year, when Jupiter goes to Taurus, Virgo gets to travel and they'll have the money to do it. And you could go somewhere really exciting like Istanbul or someplace you haven't been like to see the the pyramids in Egypt or or go to Kyoto and walk down ancient streets and I mean there's so many places to go you could see the I saw the 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 Chinese wall because I do business in China and I couldn't believe that I'd ever get to see that it's so exciting so pick a place that you'd love to see and, and target that the um the Leos are also foreign people, foreign markets are very lucky for them. But I have to say, Leo, if you're a Leo, May is unbelievable. You're going to have five heavenly bodies in your house of honors, awards, achievement, fame, including Jupiter. You are whatever you're doing now is about to pay off. Big time. May is such a big month. I think you should get your wardrobe ready because you're going to be meeting the press. <laughs> and it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, and we talked about Virgo and Libra. Uh, Libra has uh, Jupiter in uh, Aries in the house of marriage. Their partner does well, but also they can hire someone at work like um, a business partner, uh, a new accountant, a new lawyer, someone you work with on a confidential basis closely. And the second half of the year, they really start making money. And I'm happy to say this because they've had some problems with unexpected expenses and they've been freaking out about them, like taxes and stuff that they didn't expect mm -hmm. or their accountant made a mistake. Maybe it's time for a new account, but I'll tell you, they're going to do really well with money. Scorpio, Scorpio, you do not have to worry if your company looks like they're going to be merged with another one or something's happening. You're protected with your work and uh, especially the first four and a half months. If you want to change your job, do it then. But August is awfully good too. And you could, you know, you're going to have that partnership aspect that the sign before you did. It, that means a headhunter could help you. Someone who, who deals in job listings, um, any kind of collaborator, um, a wedding planner, any kind of collaborator, publicist, anyone who works with you one-on-one -on -one equal to you, mm -hmm. Confidentially, it's excellent. And marriage, oh my gosh. Scorpio has fabulous marriage aspects, just beautiful. And Sagittarius, health and fitness. This is your year to, to lose those five pandemic pounds. <laughs> but this is an athletic sign to begin with. And uh, they, but before they even worry about that and don't even start, you know, changing your diet and 
going off processed. Well, no, it's always good to go off processed foods. But the first four months of the year is fabulous for love. Just in time for Valentine's Day. This year is great for love. Just great. So now, the uh, so love, work, and fitness all is perfect for you. Uh, then we have a, a Capricorn. Capricorn, I want you to listen to me. Real estate is so good for you. I would like you to think about putting that down payment on a house. Now, you might say, wait a minute. Interest rates are through the roof. Yes. But the seller sometimes needs to sell the house. I remember when my mom died, she had a condo. We needed to sell it and and really get moving on that because there are daily expenses with any house or condo or whatever it is. So the seller may say, I understand the rates are high. So I'll lower my price a little to, to help you out. And they always say, if you love a space, write a letter to the person who owns it and say what you're going to do with it and how much you love it. Sometimes that's more important than money. So see, I, you, I, you're so lucky, Capricorn, with real estate that I want you to take advantage. This is once in 12 years. After that, after you feather your nest, love and baby comes in as a huge, huge um, trend. Starts May 16th, goes a full 12 months. Now, if you say, I'm not interested in babies, and I'm not interested in love right now. Okay, you can use it for creativity because it's the same house. And then we have two more signs left, Aquarius. Aquarius, you've had eclipses in your house of home. And this is the very area that that may have caused some stress in 22 and may, again, cause you to worry about what you're going to do next in, in two spots in 23 when we have two eclipses in the Taurus uh, Scorpio realm. But you're so lucky with Capricorn's luck comes transferred to you May 16th all the way to May 24th, the following year. So I want you to focus on home. If you have a home you love, you may be able to renovate your kitchen, buy a new handsome piece of furniture, or maybe you want to direct it by helping your mom or dad. You know, maybe they're getting older, they need an aid or something in the home. There's a whole lot you can do. Okay, and we have one and more sign. I, We're running out of time. Pisces is there's money, so money, money. There's so much Pisces is okay, so one more sign. So much money in the beginning of the year. And after that, <laughs> they'll probably be writing a book in the second half. Okay, that's awesome. The last question I want to ask you is what's going to happen with the stock market? Oh, well, I'm not an expert with the stock market because there are astrologers who just do that. But I will say this. Jupiter and Pluto are going to square each other. And uh, that happens in May. And that usually means tweaking is necessary. Uh, when we had Jupiter conjunct Pluto, we had the pandemic and I thought lots and lots of prosperity and big, big deals. Well, how it worked out was different than I expected because it was the money from the government mm. to help people, billions, you know. So it was still big, but it was not in the way I thought was even possible. So we're going to have to do a tweak. Will there be a recession? A mild one. And it will only last one year. Okay. Because by June of 24, Jupiter and Pluto are friends. They're not fighting anymore. And that's remarkable because usually when they start fighting, they don't stop for a while. So they, they are going to stop. So I think it's mild. Some industries are, are going to be resistant. Others... Not so much. I think digital, even though the tech industry has been hard hit, I think they will recover really fast. So I, you know, I think we can weather whatever storm is coming. I think we can. I think they're doing all the right things to cool down the economy, even though we don't like the high interest rates. They're really high. 
and you know the grocery stuff. I don't know if prices come down when inflation stops. I I don't know how much they're going to come down. I think this is the new world we're going to live in. Yeah, it might be. But I'm saying that not as an astrologer, just as a person. Right. You know, but um, no, I think we can we can figure it out. I think it will be okay. It will not be devastating. Okay. So we don't have to worry, you know, things, things look so doom and gloom at times. And, and what you're saying is it's all working itself out, right? Yeah. Life is a learning experience and it's ultimately creative to think outside the box, to work differently, to, to, to be flexible. Very important in the coming year, be flexible, be experimental, be adventurous try things we're all going to fall over and then we have to stand up and dust ourselves off it's part of the process but it's okay we're all in this together i i I attack change it's like i'm fearless when it comes to change yeah me too i'm going for it (laughs) i don't care how scared i am i'm just i'm going for it just go for it yes it's true It's better than resisting it because you're spending so much time pushing it back Mm -hmm. that you could be directing the energy in a better way. (laughs) So we have to end this, Susan, but I'm so fascinated with all of this. So your website is uh, astrologyzone.com. Okay. Astrologyzone.com. Yes. Do you work one-on-one with people or you mainly are just out I, there I can I can do one or two charts but see I'm so detailed as you see in my writing <laughs> that I can only do one or possibly two people in um uh, in a month so because I'm writing for Vogue Japan W Korea wow. you know all these different uh Mika Italy and uh different magazines around the world as a regular columnist not once in a while i just wrote the cover story for vogue japan for the year ahead and uh, they said make it short susan and i handed in twenty thousand words and (laughs) and she said today's my birthday and this is my gift so they were happy oh my gosh i thought they would kill me you know but uh no i i tend to think in detail and when i meet with a person I spend two and a half hours with them so I it's a lot of time and it's a lot of work before I meet them and I tend to be more expensive than other people because my time is so limited so I have other astrologers that I vetted who I respect who's written books and I can um I can recommend them so they can just write to the site and we'll help them out perfect that's great to know well, I know you're coming out of an illness, and I hope that you. Continue to <laughs> I had a bad back. cold. Didn't yeah. have COVID, thank goodness. Yeah. No. And um, I hope you continue to feel better and better. And thank I'm glad you. that we were able to make this happen today. Uh, we had a couple glitches in the beginning, but here we are. We got a great. We did a great show. So I so appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all the information. I am thrilled that you invited me again. <laughs> yeah. I remember you from last time. You stand out. You're. You have interesting guests, and I I really am honored to be on your show. Thank you. I'm honored to have you. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to meet someday. We're going to meet. I would love, where are you located? I'm in Manhattan. Where are you? So I'm in South Florida. Um, Oh, my daughter's. I dream about where palm trees sway and turquoise water. Oh my gosh. And where, so my daughter's in Manhattan, and um, she'll be having a baby in April. Maybe oh I'll boy have, maybe i'll have that's time. such a good time because jupiter will be conjunct the son of that baby it's a happy little baby oh. of course i'd need the exact day but what part of the city does she live in what she's in the upper west side oh well i'm upper east so okay we can have lunch or dinner okay. yeah yeah <laughs> i'll have to contact you all right okay. have well, a thank you so much your day. talk soon okay thank you okay all right bye-bye bye-bye